welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about skincare and skin health. Um, and I'm going to try and give you sort of like a, a detailed version of uh, products that I use and why. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I've got no makeup on. I just kind of wanted to, you know, show you even though my skin's not great at the moment, but like, I mean, who cares, right? Like the main thing is that you guys um, see that I'm comfortable with the way my skin is at the moment and I can show you exactly what I use and the steps that I take to look after sort of good skin. The three things that you need definitely is moisturizer, SPF, and primer. So these are the things that would really, really help, um, you know, keeping your makeup on longer but also protecting your skin um, in the long run. Moisturizer depending on your skin type. So if you have dry skin you obviously need something that's very moisturizing so you want something that's a little bit thicker and um, that keeps it moisturized all day um, and then the SPF that you want for dry skin as well is probably something again that's very sort of liquidy, very sort of creamy and moisturizing and there are so many different types of SPF that you can obviously look into. If you have oily skin you obviously want some moisturizer that's a little bit more gel-like, nothing too heavy, because you don't want to clog your pores and then put makeup on top of it, and then SPF, and da-da-da-da-da. It's just, you know, it's just going to be a vicious cycle. You're just going to obviously break out and stuff like that. Um, so I would say something more gel-like, something very light, and even with SPF, there are so many um, SPFs that are very water-based, that are very, very light on the skin, so you don't feel like you have so much on, but it's really, really important that you do have your SPF. There are loads of products that you can use that you can even use on top of your makeup because depending on if it's SPF 30 or 50, whatever it is, you do need the protection. Every few hours you do need to top up um, and it does help. Um, I will attach the link to a blog that I wrote about SPF so that you can kind of, you know, educate yourself a little bit or you can just Google it and then you know how important SPF is. I've been wearing SPF in either my moisturizers or on top of my moisturizers for the last... 12, 13 years and um, you know whenever I go to a skin specialist they always say to me you have absolutely no sun damage you know and sun damage obviously causes a lot of things from like even wrinkles to you know like just like a different type of like texture of skin I could I could be wrong but like yeah just do your homework on that the other thing that actually kind of falls into moisturizer as well um, are two other things eye cream and lip balm um, again, it depends what your skin feels like. So I'm starting to age a little bit. So um, I am starting to get wrinkles under my eyes. Um, I'm also getting like sort of like wrinkles around the forehead or whatever it is. But under the eyes, I can fix it. And um, again, it depends. There are so many. There are so many eye creams and um, you know products for the under eye or above or around or whatever. And you have to do your research. I'm no beautician. I'm not a skin specialist either. I'm just a makeup artist. So the product that I actually use is from Dr. Dennis Gross. It's the Triple Correction Eye Serum. You can buy this in London. Of, of course, you can get it in the US. Um, I'm not 100% sure if you can get it anywhere else, but let's just say, even if you don't have access to this particular eye cream that I've done loads of research on and have been using for the last three years, and it really did or has um, reduced um, the appearance of my wrinkles and I haven't gotten any new wrinkles um, or maybe I have but it's just a slower process I don't know but it, it's definitely doing something for me it has retinol and not everyone um, reacts very well to retinol so I would say definitely look into it because for some people their skin peels it didn't happen for me um, so I guess I'm okay with retinol, but I would just look into that as well. So eye cream is really great, and I use that during the day. So eye cream, moisturizer, SPF, and primer. Now, one product that I also use is, yeah, so it's from Armani. It's an SPF uh, 50, and it also has the primer in it. So I find it easier. I have more of an oily skin, so for me, I need something that's really, really light. So what I like about this as well, it's like, it's very sort of like water-based, um, very very liquidy so I don't feel like I've got this really thick film of SPF on my skin and it doesn't leave any white sort of you know that white finish that you get from SPF you don't get it um, they are really really hard to get hold of actually like I you know the only store in London that I can actually buy this they don't have them at airports they don't have them anywhere else but in London I only get them from Harvey Nichols now or Selfridges and it's really annoying because I have to order it online 
and they are pricey and there's not a lot of it in there so if anybody has any great suggestions for SPFs or primers for um, oily skin please leave it in the feedback I would love to try different products um, that are not going to react with my skin and moisturizer again it's completely your choice I'm I feel a little bit spoiled because I do use the La Mer, um moisturizing soft cream it's actually my friend's fault she gave me a sample and I thought no I don't want to try this because if I try it I'm gonna get addicted to it and I'm gonna buy it but I ended up loving it and I bought it and it's it's really really nice um I must admit I don't feel like it works very well for me in hotter climates so it's great in London it's great when I go to Canada or anything but um when I'm in Malaysia I, I don't feel like it it gives me the sort of result that I really want from skincare so I am going to change my skincare um, because I don't have access to a lot of these products I mean La Mer, Malaysia does have La Mer but I'm going to sort of um, change a lot of my skincare so I will do an updated video of my skincare um, but again I've just showed you what I personally use it doesn't mean that you have to use this for this to work and it doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot of money on skincare and things like that because I find skincare and makeup are things that you put on top of the skin. It doesn't necessarily do a lot else, basically. And um, so I would say, you know, skin health is more important than skincare. So skin health, I'm talking about the stuff that you eat and how you look after your skin. So obviously from like let's say a routine of like, you know, cleaning your face, um, making sure you clean in the morning, clean at night you know, so cleansing and obviously a really good sort of serum or something that your skin sort of needs to repair itself or whatever, especially for people who live in cities, I would say it's very, very important that you cleanse and you look after your skin and food, skin health, when I talk about skin, skin health is food. Think about food that you need that really helps skin, you know, like we, we worry about hair growth and nail growth, but what about the skin? Like, how do we look after the skin? Do we exfoliate enough? Like, so that, you know, you don't get those little tiny bums. Some people like my mum and my aunt, they have like very tiny little sort of these black spots and, and whatever. And they've just, it's years and years of not looking after, you know, your skin. So I think it's very important that you do look at, you know, how, what you need to eat and what you need to do to look after your skin. So again, only you will know that, um, you know, having experimented probably. Um, but I would say instead of wasting time and a lot of money on products that maybe even I or any other beauty blogger is recommending on social media, do what works for you. So go to a nutritionist or a dermatologist or a skin specialist, spend the money there, you know, of course go to somebody that's recommended because some people they're not really qualified but then yet they're giving you advice on it so go visit them talk to them about your skin needs and whatever and ideally try and not buy a lot of products that people recommend you like in these sessions try and just figure out what your skin needs that's the main thing so just educate yourself get the knowledge and then go and figure out what's gonna work for you don't just easily buy something just because somebody else tells you to because you know what that same product even the three products that I've just recommend I mean not recommended but said I use might not work for you at all and all three products from my eye cream to my you know SPF and the moisturizer it's very expensive and um, so I don't want you to go out there and buy the exact same things because if it doesn't work for you all you're gonna do is sit with me so <laughs> No thanks. Um, so I would probably say go um, figure out like you know your skin, and you know please respect the fact as well that hormones play a huge role, um, genetics play a huge role, and sometimes it's just like you know at the moment if you can see. So I've got nothing on. I've got a lot of scars and spots around here. So this is usually hormonal, and I get this once a month, and I I get the spots around here a lot, and um, I scar very easily. So and I'm really bad with usually picking my spots so I'm left with a lot of scars um, so I do and you know sometimes my skin if you see my YouTube videos looks flawless and sometimes it doesn't and so I didn't want to give you a video with perfect you know makeup on and talk to you about skincare because you're gonna look at my makeup or made up face and think oh that cream is really working for her you know it, it's not like that so this is literally I have nothing on but my moisturizer my eye cream and um, 
I don't even have any lip balm on, so I don't have anything on. But I'm just telling you that this is what I use during the day. I obviously have a complete different routine for my night time. I find night time is a lot more time consuming, I'm not gonna lie. And whenever I have, and I still do, I have friends or cousins who go to sleep with their makeup on you know, with their mascara on or whatever. And for me, that's like, it actually gives me like, like, <laughs> I hyperventilate. I genuinely do. And I think to myself, how can you do that to your skin? Like, oh my God. I mean, generally, most people just want to take their makeup off. It's almost like, you know, taking your clothes off and just wearing your comfy clothes or whatever. And you just want to feel, you know, like you can breathe um, in your own skin. And so people that just fall asleep with their makeup on just because they can't be bothered to take it off. I always think, whoa you're gonna really regret this decision in 20 years um maybe even 10 but yeah so nighttime most important thing like i said you could be you could have been on the train you could have been out all day you could have you know what even if you sat at home doing nothing and you weren't exposed to anything you'll be surprised how much bacteria is on everything and anything. Think about your skin, the skin, what it's exposed to. So I would say, like I mentioned earlier, cleansing. And this is something that my nutritionist told me as well, that like cleansing is so important. And I'm not gonna say this is right or wrong. I'm just saying what works for me. You don't have to do the cleansing, then the toner, then this, then that, and this mist and that spray. Like, I didn't have to do it all these years. I didn't, nobody's ever told me to do that. I think it's just, you know, if you go to a store, they have like 20 products and obviously the people in the store are gonna try and sell you all 20 products. So I just think, keep it really simple, just clean your face. First step, if you are wearing makeup, just remove your makeup. And the two products that I really, really like and use, and they're so inexpensive, you can get that anywhere in the world, so this is not just for Europe or London or whatever, are the two Garnier. So they do different, different um, cleansing waters um, based on your skin type. So I've got an oil-infused cleansing water. Um, I know it says for dry and sensitive skin, but the reason I use this is this is what I use to remove my like eye makeup mainly So I don't use it around the rest of my face because I already have oily skin So I don't want to obviously add more oil So I just use this to clean just my eye makeup on like a normal cotton pad um, You know whatever you want to use it with don't use tissue or anything because all you end up doing is just wasting a lot of this product Because the tissue absorbs a lot more than a than a pad you, a lot of you might already know this, but I'm just saying. Um, so I just use this to remove my eye makeup. First step. Second step, I use the micellar um, cleansing water. And I just literally wipe off the rest of the makeup with that on, you know, like a pad as well. And that's just like my first basic done. And then I wash my face. And I wash my face with my Sunday Riley um, clay cleanser. And I've used this for a long time. And... I'm really, really happy with it. And again, now let's go back to oily skin, dry skin. So if you have um, dry skin, I would say go for something that's really moisturizing. So you want something that doesn't strip your face. So, you know, um, like products that have a lot of foam, you know, when you're like washing it and there's like a lot of foam that builds up and you feel like, wow, it's really cleaning because it's got loads of foam and soap and whatever. Actually, it's not entirely true. Like when you do that, you end up stripping your skin of all, like every, like the dirt, yes, but also all its natural oils. So what you will feel after you've foam cleansed is your skin feels really, really, really dry. So I would say if you have a dry skin, go for something that's milky. That's like, so this one is kind of like, um, it's like a weird milk texture. So it's, it's a little bit watery and it doesn't foam. Um, but it really cleanses my pores and everything. I mean, it's it's also great for people who have oily skin. So I um, I've even told my husband to to use anything that's milky and that doesn't foam. I've I've heard on so many, you know, skin specialists and beauty bloggers talking about products that foam are not that great because they do strip your skin completely. Um, so I would say go for um, a face wash that has that you know that milky texture or whatever, and you you know, you're gonna have your um, favorites anyway. Try and also not get um, face washes that have like beads in them, meaning, you know, sometimes they say exfoliating face wash or, you know, whatever. Like anything that has the word exfoliating in a product already, 
try and sort of avoid it a little bit just because um, you shouldn't be exfoliating every single day. I mean, again, it just strips your skin and whatever. Um, that's what I feel. And I, I feel like it's never really worked for me. So try and um, only exfoliate maybe twice a week, it, max three times a week, but don't do it every single day. It, it does, um, in the long run, it's not very good for your skin anyway. So that, that would be my next step. Water a lot of this and just like wash everything off and it already feels great. Now, I don't towel dry my face, I use tissues. That's a habit that I got into, um, I don't know, over 10 years ago. Um, usually just because I feel like, you know, wet towels and stuff, they're like in the bathroom, they're exposed to a lot of stuff and um, I don't wanna then use the same towel again and just like dry my face. So I'd rather just have like clean tissue and just dab my um, skin dry. Some people like, you know, just air drying their face, which is great. Um, try and not do the teju, nasuju, you know, like that kind of stuff. Don't, try and not do that basically. Um, so that's already your face clean. You don't need to do anything else, so it's just like those three steps, um, done. And then the next bit is now, right, you're about to go to sleep, what do you wear on your skin? Like, what do you do? Like, and there are so many products out there. So it really, again, depends what your skin feels like. Now, if you feel like your skin's feeling really dry, even somebody that has oily skin like myself, I feel that my skin can sometimes, depending on the season, if I'm exposed to a lot of air conditioning or if I'm traveling a lot, my skin gets very dry and very sort of like dull and whatever. So I need something that moisturizes and I feel bad. Um, I'm gonna, you know, talk about another La Mer product, um, which I, to be honest, prefer more than my moisturizer, but um, so this one is just a revitalizing hydrating serum. So like the word suggest hydrating. And it's very milky. Again, it's very, very light. It feels almost like a like a gel. Um, so I use this now every single night. So I use this every night. Um, just one pump is enough for me. And my skin feels very nicely moisturized the next day. Um, for my eye cream, I don't actually use the Dr. Dennis Gross. I actually use something that's a bit more intense because obviously I'm going to sleep with it. So I want something that's... Um, a lot heavier than what I'm using during the day. So again, I use the La Mer Eye Balm Intense. That is what I'm using at the moment, but to be honest, um, I don't think it's amazing. It's not, um, I, I bought it, it's very expensive, so I'm obviously going to finish it, but um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Like, you know, some people might have tried it and they might have loved it, but I genuinely think the, um, the Dr. Dennis Gross is, is enough. Like if morning and night it is is meant to be for morning and night anyway so you can um it's just i bought it don't ask me why i bought it and i thought wow it's amazing let me just try this but honestly speaking i don't feel like it did much for my wrinkles i felt like the dr dennis gross did a lot more i think for me i need the retinol so anyway so definitely eye cream definitely something that's moisturizing or whatever now, if you have oily skin, so um, if your skin feels a little bit more oily and stuff, you definitely need something that's more like a serum or something um, that's very, very light. People sometimes think if you have oily skin, you cannot add any oil to it. Absolutely wrong. That myth is completely wrong. I used to believe that for many years because I have oily skin and I actually use, um, so this lapis um, facial oil from Herbivore, uh, I feel bad for recommending this again, just because um, you can, I mean, England stocks it now, but I, I don't have access to this in Malaysia at all. So I'm really sad about it because I know it just means I have to travel to London um, or whenever I travel to London, I'm going to have to buy this. Um, but I'm sure Malaysia and all the, the Asian countries must have a lot of organic oils that I can use. So this one's actually an organic oil. And um, so I know there's not like extra stuff in it that um, I might be scared of, you know, like imagine you react to it or something like that. So, um, so yeah, so you can use oils. Um, Sunday Riley, so this, this brand where I use my cleanser as well, they do loads of oils. They do, um, you know, they do the Luna oil, they do uh, the UFO that I used to use for a long time that I rec recommended in my previous video as well. And um, it is, they're great, they are really, really nice, but you know when you feel like, okay, is it really worth the money because the Sunday Riley oils are very expensive? Um, this one actually was really expensive as well. I think it, if I'm not lying, I think it was like $75 or $80 or something like that. So these oils are expensive, but the good thing with them is you only need like one or two pumps of these. Um, and like, not pumps, but you know what I mean. And yeah, and they last a really, really long time. So I've had 
this this particular lapis fa facial oil I've had it now for about eight months and I use it two to three times a week so it, it does last a really really long time I think that's the great thing with spending a lot of money on skincare because they last a little bit longer but with organic products you have to look at expiry date and stuff talking about it I should check if if this is even you know if I can still use it um, yeah, so that's what I sort of use every day, like if, when I go to sleep as well, like it's just like I make sure that I have eye cream, I make sure that I have like something to moisturize my skin, I don't go to sleep with nothing on it because I need, you know, it's almost like you're giving your skin a little bit of a treatment while you sleep and stuff, so I think it's very important. Um, and lip balms, honestly, it can be anything, just make sure you do wear lip balm. I. I tell all my brides this, like for two weeks in a row, I always say to them, just like wear lip balm. The only lip balm that I would say, please do not use is Vaseline. Do not use Vaseline on your lips because um, from the research that I've read and from something that I've experienced and a lot of my friends and stuff have experienced is that Vaseline ends up over time, gives you darker lips. And um, I noticed it on myself and I stopped uh, very quickly and just like started using just normal um, lip balm. If you do want to know the lip balm that I use, oh, I feel bad, it's the La Mer lip balm. It's 50 quid. I'm never buying this again just because it's so ridiculous to spend so much money on lip balm but it is really 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 nice. So I would say honestly um, just use anything that has maybe like some kind of wax in it um, so something that actually gives you some sort of benefits um, to the skin not just to moisturize if that makes sense because think of your evening routine to be more of a treatment now finally I would say exfoliating now when my mom came to me the other day and she was just like what's exfoliating and why do you need to do that now this is something that Sana, my nutritionist, actually explained to me. She said that, um, you know, just like with hair or your lashes or whatever, like, you, you know, your body goes through a cycle where it sort of sheds the skin, right? So if naturally it sheds the skin, so you need like, you know, certain types of uh, nutrients and vitamins and stuff that actually help do that and stuff, right? Just like with collagen and whatever and stuff. So it's like there are so many things that goes on with the skin that, you know, we can help it by basically eating the right things and giving the body the right things to do those things, if that makes sense. Mm, but yeah, so your skin is supposed to shed. When your skin doesn't shed, or when it doesn't automatically do that, that's when you get like, you know, really, really, really tiny bumps. Like, they're not spots, but they're just like tiny bumps where your skin's very textured and it's very rough because your makeup sits so much better on smooth skin. So one really important part where you immediately see it on people is the nose. You know this bit that has like the tiny, tiny, tiny little bumps and it's just like, you know, um, you can see it, you can see the texture. So I would say definitely exfoliating and exfoliate around the really rough areas where you get it the most. So I would say definitely forehead, the chin area, sometimes on the cheek, not too much, and then the nose area. What do you exfoliate with? Honestly, there are so many natural masks um, that you can do at home. I'm sure if you asked your mom, she would know so many natural things that you can make at home and obviously, you know, do the mask and um, exfoliate your skin two to three times a week, I would say. It's not always convenient for everyone, especially me. Like, it's not easy for me to just sit there and spend the time to obviously make this mask and then put it on my face and then weigh and then exfoliate it. Like, I wish I did. I don't have the time, unfortunately. So I need something that's a little bit quicker. So that's why I invest in skincare um, to do it. So from the Hair Before range, again, um, this one's called Blue Tansy. Sadly, this is not in the UK just yet. So I bought this or my husband bought this from me, uh, for me, it, from the US um, last year. So again, it's lasted me about, you know, eight months. And, uh, you know, I'm just halfway through, basically. Um, so it's basically um, organic again, um, which is, honestly, no matter what your skin type is, if you use organic products, I can guarantee you, you will not react. Because nobody reacts to organic products. Why would you, right? It's like, it's like, putting karalama and whatever, why would you react to it? Um, so um, if you can get hold of organic products, and I know Malaysia, you know, Korea, India, there are loads of organic products that you can get hold of. Or if your party sits at home doing nothing, just ask her to make you a mask. <laughs> but yeah, so I use this, or sometimes, um, there are so many products out there that you can use, um, you know, there are little masks, you know, like the Boskia ones, and there are so many different, different types of masks that work for different people, but try and exfoliate 
um, I try and do it two, through, two to three times a week and um, it really, really helps. It takes all those little tiny bumps off and people always ask me, oh, like your skin looks quite smooth, especially once I've applied um, my makeup and stuff and I'm just like, yep, that's what did it. Another magical product um, is the Good Jeans from Sunday Riley. Um, this, I don't care. I'm going to buy every time I come to London or if anybody visits me in Malaysia from London, I'm just going to be like, bring me a massive bottle of this. So I've loved it. Um, almost through with this now. Like, um, it, it is very pricey, I'm not gonna lie. But this one is a lactic acid treatment. So what this basically does, whenever I wear this, within two to three minutes, my skin's like so plump and it's very very glowy and then the next day my skin is completely smooth so it's quite an intense treatment and whenever people usually comment under some of my videos or something like you know the snapchat videos or like the insta stories they're just like oh my god your skin's looking great what do you have on it's it's this it's definitely this and i i use this as a treatment and i go to sleep this i'm quite careful with i i usually just use this um, sort of like twice a week maybe maybe sometimes even once a week so I um, you know I do use it M one of my friends who um, tried this as well she actually didn't like it at all and she said that it didn't work for her it didn't do anything for her so please don't go out and buy any of these products that I've suggested again you know get samples try them do the research it didn't work for her but that's what I mean. I think there are two types of exfoliating serums um, or products, glycolic acid or lactic acid, okay? So you have the people that like glycolic acid and they feel like that works better for their skin and then there are people who like the lactic acid. Glycolic acid actually burns my skin. Like, doesn't matter what percentage, I tried to use the lowest percentage you can possibly get in the market and still it really reacts badly with my skin. So I I was very traumatized by it and I thought, no, I'm never putting acid on my face. But then I tried the lactic acid because I, some of the bloggers that I follow who specialize in skincare and talk about skincare, um, i.e. Caroline Hirons, um, she actually mentioned it. It's on her wall of fame. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try and I bought it and it's amazing. I absolutely love it. So again, um, figure out which category you are in. I'm really, really sorry if you feel like that was a lot of information. I know I've talked for a really long time, but I just thought I'd, instead of just telling you what products I'm using, I kind of wanted to explain what I use for what and why, and I kind of didn't, I kind of wanted to help you guys out with what's good for dry skin and what's good for um, oily skin as well. Um, so yeah, so I hope you found this video useful. I would love, love, love to get your feedback and to find out the type of products that you use, especially for my uh, followers from all the Asian countries, from the Asian subcontinents. Like, please tell me what products you use and what works, because I'm sure all the other readers would absolutely appreciate that and they can go out and try it. And Obviously, since I'm moving to Malaysia in a few months, um, I would love to know some of the products that you guys use as well. From everything, from SPF to, um, you know, moisturizers, exfoliators, name it, eye cream, whatever it is. Um, please do uh, let us know. Um, I would love it. And if you do like this video and found it really, really useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and, um, you know, share. And, yeah, that's it. Until next time.